الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المسلمين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Dear viewers, welcome to another episode of our program Fortunate Believers in which we are discussing those blessed verses of the Quran where Allah Azza wa Jal directly addresses the believers by saying Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu All those who believed And inshallah in this episode again we're going to mention a verse beginning with Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu and then the hukum that is mentioned thereafter and also mentioning what the ulama have said in regards to that topic as well so let us listen to the verse first of all surah maida verse 6 bismillahir rahmanir rahim ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu idha qumtum ila as-salati faghsilu wujuhakum wa aydiyakum ila al-marafiq wa msahu bi ru'usikum wa arjulakum ila al-ka'bayn وَإِن كُنتُمْ جُنُبًا فَاطَّهَّرُوا وَإِن كُنتُمْ مَرْضَىٰ أَوْ عَلَىٰ سَفَرٍ أَوْ جَاءَ أَحَدٌ مِّنكُم مِّنَ الْغَائِطِ أَوْ لَامَسْتُمُ النِّسَاءَ فَلَمْ تَجِدُوا أَوْ لَامَسْتُمُ النِّسَاءَ فَلَمْ تَجِدُوا مَاءً فَتَيَمَّمُوا فَتَيَمَّمُوا صَعِيدًا طَيِّبًا فَامْسَحُوا بِوُجُوهِكُمْ وَأَيْدِيكُمْ مِنْ مَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيَجْعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ حَرَجٍ وَلَكِنْ يُرِيدُ لِيُطَهِّرَكُمْ وَلِيُتِمَّ نِعْمَتَهُ عَلَيْكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Translation O oh believers, when you intend to stand for salah, so wash your faces and your hands up to, i.e. including the elbows, and pass the wet hands over your heads and wash your feet, including the ankles. And if you need to have an obligatory bath, so clean yourselves thoroughly. And if you are sick or on a journey, or if any of you comes having responded to the call of nature, or you have had intercourse with your wives, and in these conditions you do not find water, so perform tayammum with pure sand. Hence, rub your faces therewith and your hands, i.e. including the forearms as well as the elbows. Allah does not will to place any hardship upon you. Yes, He wills to purify you totally and complete His favor upon you so that you may be grateful. So this was the verse that we just heard and the translation as well. So inshallah ta'ala in this episode, the following things will be discussed. Which types of ibadah is wudu necessary for? the importance, the significance, excellence, the virtues of wudu, the faraid of wudu, how to perform wudu, washing the whole body for ghusl, and if water is not available, then one can perform tayammum if he meets the conditions. Inshallah, these things will be discussed in this particular episode. We heard about the command of performing wudu in this verse. So first, to begin to commence, when does a person have to perform wudu? Prior to that, just understand one thing that there are two types of tahara. There is purification from najasate haqiqi and purification from najasate hukmi. Najasate haqiqi is impurity which can be seen and you must remove it from the body or wherever it is on your clothes, etc. And najasate hukmi refers to performing wudu and ghusl. And this is what we're going to discuss in this particular episode purifying oneself from najasate hukmi. Now, first of all, a person must perform wudu when he intends to offer salah. Whenever you read namaz, salah, you must be in a state of wudu. Only then can one offer salah. In one hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, we're told, Miftahu salati at tuhur that the key to salah is purification. And if a person hasn't purified himself, how can he offer salah? This is ibadah of Allah Azza wa Jal. And he has to comply with the commands of Allah. Allah Azza wa Jalla has commanded you to perform wudu, then a person must perform wudu before salah. And here the ulama say that if someone offers salah, reads namaz without wudu, that he is sinful, he's committed a haram act. But if he does this with the intention of belittling salah, disrespecting salah, then he has left the fold of Islam. Meaning he considers it an act that doesn't require wudu, and he doesn't give no ahmiya, importance to salah, is disrespectful, then he leaves the fold of Islam. This is how important it is 
to do wudu before salah. The second place where a person has to do wudu is when performing sajdatul tilawa. Now sajdatul tilawa refers to 14 verses of the Quran where if a person recites that verse or hears that verse live, not from a recording or on TV, but live, then he must perform sajda in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is sajda to tilawa. And it requires wudu. It cannot be done without wudu. The third place is offering salatul janazah. You go to offer someone's funeral prayer, you must be in a state of wudu. And here it's important to know that some people, they will attend janazah. Why? Because just to save their face. Oh, it's my friend's father's janazah, for example. Or it's someone I know. If I don't go, they're going to think bad of me. They're going to say bad things about me. I must go. But some people, out of shyness or embarrassment, may not perform wudu before the salatul janazah. Meaning they're shy and embarrassed to not show their face before their friends or their relatives. What about salah? What about the janazah you're going to offer? You need to have wudu. And if you don't offer janazah with wudu, then what was the point going? That was the main thing that is looked at in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fourth thing the ulama say is touching the Qur'an. When you touch the mushaf, the Qur'an Sharif, you must be in a state of wudu. Yes, there is ease in reciting the Qur'an by heart, for example, or off a computer, etc. There you don't have to have wudu. But if you're touching the Qur'an Park, you must be in a state of wudu. And lastly, tawaf. If you're performing tawaf in Haram Park in Makkah Sharif, you must be in a state of wudu. So these are five places. So these were five maqamat, five places where a person has to be in a state of wudu and then carry out that particular action, that command. Otherwise, he'll be sinful. Moving on, let us go to the importance in Islam of wudu, the significance, the excellence and the virtues as well. As we heard, performing wudu is the key to salah and salah is the key to jannah. As salatu miftahul jannah. So it begins with wudu, then salah, then inshallah you will enter jannah. But there are so many narrations regarding the excellence of uh, performing wudu. And let us begin with an account which is mentioned in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad radiallahu ta'ala and Sayyidina Uthman bin Affan radiallahu an. And from this account we learn how much love the Sahaba had for the Prophet ﷺ and his blessed acts. How much they would try to emulate and copy. Sayyidina Uthman bin Affan radiallahu an once asked a person to bring him some water. And this was in a particular place and he performed wudu. And thereafter, he began to smile suddenly. And he asked his companions who were with him, he said, do you know why I smiled? Then he replied himself. And he said, once the Prophet ﷺ performed wudu, and then he smiled and he asked the same question. He asked his companions, do you know why I smiled? And then the Prophet ﷺ answered, during wudu, when a man washes his hands, the sins of his hands are washed away. When he washes his face, the sins of his face are washed away. When he wipes his head, the sins of his head are washed away. And when he washes his feet, the sins of his feet are washed away. Subhanallah. These things should be kept in mind when performing wudu. Our sins are being washed away. And look at the andaz, look at the manner. Sayyidina Uthman bin Affan ta'ala and copied the Prophet and his manner of asking his companions, you know why I did wudu? And then he explained the fadila as well. Subhanallah. We have another narration, Shu'abul Iman. The beloved Prophet ﷺ said to Sayyiduna Anas radiallahu anhu. Sayyiduna Anas radiallahu an was the khadim khas of the Prophet ﷺ. He stayed approximately 10 years in his blessed company, served him as well. The Prophet ﷺ said, son, if you have the capability to remain in the state of wudu at all times, then do so. Because martyrdom is recorded for anyone who is in the state of wudu when his soul is removed by the angel of death. Allahu Akbar. Imagine that dying in a state of wudu. Then you're recorded as a martyr in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're recorded as a martyr, a shaheed. This is the reward of staying in a state of wudu. Again, in Shu'abul Iman, the same book, there's a narration Allah Azza wa Jal said to Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, O Musa, blame only yourself if you suffer a calamity whilst not in the state of wudu. Allahu Akbar. And this is a tip to avoid calamities. Stay in the state of wudu, inshallah, you will remain blessed. And Allah Aziz Rahmatullahi Ali says that it is a sunnah of Islam to remain in the state of wudu at all times. Even when sleeping in a state of wudu, we're not deprived. There's a hadith in Kanzul Ummal that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, anyone who sleeps in the state of wudu is like a fasting worshipper. 
someone who is observing fast psalm in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. And Allah Hazrat Imam Ahmad Raza Khan rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, he has mentioned in light of what the ulama, the awliya, the sufiya have said prior to him, that there are seven benefits of remaining in a state of wudu at all times. And we should try to obtain and achieve these benefits as well. Number one, angels will be eager to accompany him. The ma'asum angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The divine pen will constantly write good deeds for him. His body parts, his limbs will perform tasbih, glorification of Allah Azza wa Jal. He will not miss his takbir ula for salah, meaning the first takbir of salah, inshallah, if he's in a state of wudu, he can join jamaat. Otherwise, what happens is people come to the masjid late, they're not in a state of wudu, then they are performing the wudu. By the time they reach the jamaat, they miss their takbir ula. But someone in a state of wudu, inshallah, he will attain the first takbir. When he sleeps, Allah Azza wa Jal will send some angels to protect him from the evil of jinns and humans. I think there are shayateen from the jinn kind and insan as well. And if you stay in a state of wudu, when you sleep, when you sleep in that state, then Allah Azza wa Jal will send angels to protect you from the evil of humans and jinn. Number six, that person will have an easy death. This is what we all desire, easy death for our soul to be removed in a very easy manner. How can we attain this? By remaining in a state of wudu. And lastly, number seven, he will remain in the protection of Allah Azza wa Jal for as long as he is in a state of wudu. What more can we ask for? We're in the safety, the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these were fawaid of wudu. Moving on, let us discuss the faraid of wudu. Now in this verse, Allah Jalla wa Ala states, Ya ayyuladina amanu idha qumtum ila salati. All those who believed when you stand for salah. And thereafter, he mentions the faraid of wudu. فَغْسِلُوا وُجُوهَكُمْ First of all, wash your face. Now, first the definition of washing. The ulama have said the definition of washing is that water must flow on that area that you are washing during wuzu or ghusl. And it can't be merely rubbed or wiped. And this is a mistake that some people may make that instead of washing, they just rub their arms, they rub their limbs, they rub their face. No, you can't do that. You have to wash it in such a way that water flows on each and every part. Now, first of all, فَخْسِلُوا وُجُوهَكُمْ Wash your faces. What does it mean by washing the face? This is the first obligatory act in wudu. From where the hair naturally starts, where the hair grows, until just below the chin, you must wash from there to there, and from one earlobe to the other earlobe. All of the face must be washed in such a way that water flows over it, and true drops must flow on each part. And then, in regards to the beard, if a person has a thin beard, like myself for example, then the water must also reach the skin, because the, the hair is light, it's thin. But if the beard is thick, dense, then there is dispensation, meaning the ulama state that water does not have to reach the skin. So this was the obligation of washing the face. Next, Allah Jalla wa Ala says, وَأَيْدِيَكُمْ إِلَى الْمَرَافِقِ And wash your hands until your elbows. And here, according to Hanafi Fiqh, it means including the elbows as well. Again, wash between your fingers, from the fingertips, all the way to and including your elbows. Again, wiping is not sufficient. You must ensure that water flows. And both arms are intended here. This, that was the second obligation of wudu. The third obligation is, وَمْسَحُوا بِرُؤُوسِكُمْ That you must wipe your head. Now, wiping the head entails wiping at least a quarter of the head. So, someone has a wet hand and he just places his hand on the head. He has covered a quarter of the head. But it's sunnah to wipe the entire head. But fard is at least one quarter of the head. And the fourth fard, وَأَرْجُلَكُمْ إِلَى الْكَعْبَيْنِ They are to wash their feet up to and including the ankles. This is the shari'i masala that the feet must be washed up to and including the ankles. And here, Especially in the winter, we must pay more attention because the skin can become dry. We must wash beneath our feet properly the sole, the rear of the toes, the ankles. In fact, the Prophet ﷺ said, وَيْلُ لِلْأَعْقَابِ مِنَ النَّارِ And there are other narrations like this that woe to the ankles from the hellfire. Meaning, such ankles are in the hellfire which are not washed properly. And it can happen if we're heedless and we're neglectful as well. So when we perform these uh, obligations, washing the face, and we've described what it means washing the face, washing the arms, the hands including the elbows, wiping the head, and washing the feet including the ankles. These are the obligations. And then 
when we study fiqh, we study further, we realize there are sunan, there are certain things that are sunnah in wudu, certain things that are sunnah mu'akkada, which are emphasized sunnahs. For example, making an intention before wudu, rinsing the mouth. And some acts are mustahab, for example, facing the qibla when performing wudu, to sit on an elevated seat, etc. So there are further details in regards to wudu. We just mentioned the obligations uh, are stated in the Quran. Then there are sunan, there are mustahabbat as well. So after wudu in the verse, Allah Jalla wa'ala states, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ جُنُوبًا فَطَّهَرُوا And if you are in a major state of impurity, then you must perform ghusl. And ghusl has its own faraid. Uh, and there is detail regarding that as well. That you have to wash the entire body from head to toe. Uh, every single hair on the body must be washed. Again, the emphasis on the word washed, not just wiped or rubbed. And then because of the body, the way the body is structured, there are certain parts that you have to do takalluf. You have to put effort into washing, for example, beneath the armpits, uh, the joints, the folds of the stomach, etc. So, so many ihtiyat precautions are written by the ulama in the books of fiqh as well. We should study them. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions dispensations for those who are ill or if they're traveling, they don't have access to water, they can do tayammum. And we've already dedicated an entire episode of our series, Fortunate Believers, to the masail, uh, the fadail of tayammum. Meaning this is also a fazila for the ummah that uh, in the previous ummah, uh, they couldn't perform tayammum. And this is a dispensation for this ummah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions at the end that مَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيَجَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ حَرَجٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not intend hardship for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful, He's creating ease for you. If you're in a situation where you don't have access to water and you can't perform wudu or ghusl, then what's the alternative? Tayammum. This is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted to the ummah of the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And why does he say this? He intends to purify you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intends to purify you. And he wants to complete his favor upon you. This is a favor of Allah azza wa This is this dispensation that he has granted us. We should ponder over these things. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful to us. He doesn't want to place us into difficulty, into hardships. He is saying that to us directly. مَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيَجَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ حَرَجٍ Why? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ So that you become grateful. When you realize the mercy of Allah, how much ease He's granted you, and you follow His commands, you follow tayammum, the rulings of tayammum, inshaAllah you'll become grateful. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have been so merciful to the ummah, you have granted us ease, and that is the maqsad of these dispensations as well, that a person becomes grateful to his Lord. When we're, when we're grateful, then we're benefiting ourselves. Remember, we can never benefit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He doesn't need our gratitude. But the way he has, in his divine wisdom, ordained things, if we show shukr, then he will grant us more. This will benefit only us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the shakirin for the sake of the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Ameen bijahi nabi al Amin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.